Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Nathan's 3D Factory. I am Nathan Adams, I'm happy you're here with me, and in this episode we're going to do a viewer request by Cool Car, and this one is doing a convertible ragtop. Now I'm only going to do the mechanisms behind doing these convertible ragtops, okay? I want to show you how this is done, so we're going to get started right now. Okay, so here we are in my blender scene. First thing I want to do is I want to show you just some of the things I got here, okay? And I'm going to be taking off a few constraints just to give you an idea of just how they're put in. So, so first of all, we got this item right here that I'm going to use as my basis for animating stuff, okay? So to do that, I have this put into my local coordinates for my gimbal. And you'll see right here that I have that thing set up so that it controls the movement of this and this, okay? Now, I'm gonna do a few more steps to show you just what kind of cool things we're gonna be doing. Also, I'm gonna be locking a couple of these coordinates here. So I'm going to lock up, I don't wanna lock up the W in the rotation. We have the quaternion, and I've found that locking that up gets gimbal lock and it's really nasty. So that's why the whole quaternion system was even invented anyway. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have the local X unlocked, the local Y and Z will be locked. So that will take care of that problem. So now it's only going to be constrained to one axis, so to speak. So there we go. All right, now I can do Alt R and that will clear my rotation. Next, what I wanna do, is I wanna show you, first of all, how I got these to work in conjunction with this, and then do a few more steps. So I did a few starts. I'm cheating a little bit. I wanna shorten this video for me and for you, the viewer. Typically, when I like to watch videos, I like to watch them around eh, five minutes or so. Only a bit cheap on time, but that's what I do. Okay. So, to do this, we want to do some bone constraints. So these bone constraints, you'll see right here I have copy rotation on this bone and also on this bone. I have target armature, all this is in armature, and bone.010, I built this later. <laughs> this is experimentation, you know? So, I did the typical mix, which is replace, and I went from local space to local space. And in so doing, whatever orientation that this thing turns around or anything, it'll always be in the local space. So, now we got this, we can copy the rotation. Now, you'll notice also that, well, by default, I should say that these bones uh, they typically inherit the rotation when you do this, but in this case, we're not seeing it, right? And that is by design. So, let me show you here just what happens when I change that around. If I say inherit rotation, which is what's default, then when we do this, that's what happens. So I've disabled the inherit rotation on this bone, this bone, this bone, and this bone. So this one is still going to inherit the rotation, so to speak, but these other alternating ones will not be. Okay, so now you can see that that moves that. But I also want to move these items, this one and this one. So what I'll do is that I'm going to add another bone constraint. There we go. We're going to copy rotation, and we're going to use this same bone. We're going to go to armature, and this one was bone.010. You can tell I didn't actually spend any time doing the uh, doing any of the renaming. So this is going to be, again, a quick one here. So we're going to Copy rotation, armature, 
and we're going to this one. Now both of these need to be in local space to local space. I need to do that for this one. Local to local. Alright. And now, when I turn this, now I get this beautiful result. Isn't that beautiful? Alright. But now, you'll notice also that there are some funky things happening when I did this, where it dips down, dips over. So, what we need to do now is that we need to put a constraint on this bone. So by doing this, what we're going to do is we're going to limit rotation. And convert, we're going to again put this into local space. And I want to limit the X. Okay. Now by doing this rotation, let's say we test this out. Okay. So I'm seeing now on here that we're doing a negative if we pull it this direction and a positive if we pull it in this direction. So, we want to keep the max at zero, but let's do the negative at 140, I think I'd calculated this at. So now, we do this at negative 140. Let's make sure I've got this right. Negative 140. Okay, try this again. All right, so let's we'll try this. Okay. Minimum, once again, is giving us some grief here. There. Okay. Now let's try that again. Ah. Okay. So that was... That was fun. Alright. Okay, so from that, I'm going to clear that rotation. Alt-R. That was weird, wasn't it? Yeah, I agree. So now, take that. All right, and I don't quite like that. So, again, this has been largely experimental here. Okay, now we're gonna look at that. All right, so now if we limit it to negative 125, try that. Okay, now, do Alt R, and now we're going to try this again. Okay, I'm better with that. I do negative 120. Let's see what that one does. Okay, we'll do that one. Negative 120. Alt R, and now I have my range set up, so that's not a problem there. Now what we need to do is we need to get these ones so that what they'll end up doing is they'll end up rotating just like these. But I was having some trouble with these because whenever I would do a copy rotation, let's say, or do some kind of a driver, it always gave me these really weird result or results. So um, let me show you really quickly on just one of these. So we'll do a copy rotation and we're going to do the same bone, bone.010, okay, go to local and local. So now if I were to pull this, okay, by the way, you can also do an invert on there. And so in that case, invert is what I tried to try to do there. Oops. That one's the one I want to do. So now I get that, but that doesn't go down all the way like I want it to. I want it to be able to fold all the way so that this essentially touches this. So that's not going to work. So then I thought to myself, self, what am I going to do in this situation? And then the thought occurred to me, action constraint. So we're going to get rid of that. And now... I'll show you how to do an action constraint. So first, we're going to do action. Same on this one. Action. All right. So on here, we'll start out with this one. 
and I want to take this item, get this first into our median point. Okay. Now, to do an action constraint, I'm going to go into my animation menu, and then I'm going to insert just rotation on this one. Now, I tried a few experiments on this, and I found the best result to be an intermediate keyframe key frame right here, 90. So I did a rotation about the x-axis at 90 degrees, and then insert a keyframe there, and then RX90, another one there, and then insert rotation. Now I was just doing this in dope sheet, which I didn't want to do, but I can easily go into action editor and change that, and now I'm going to change this to fold dot, I think we could say this one's L, I don't know. It all depends on how you see it. If you're looking at the front and then like facing it, you get the idea. So sometimes it depends on how you face it. Uh, first person or third person. Or second person or third person, I should say. But now, let's say right here is where my start is. What I want to do is that I want to save that action block. And then I'm going to delete that. So, is that action entirely gone? No! <laughs> so now, I go back to what I was doing. Now what I can do is I can use that action armature bone dot zero one zero okay and we're going to do X rotation and we're going to do local space and now we'll do fold dot L and now we have to set our minimum and maximum and we're gonna do one to three okay so on here now I'm going to do negative 140 for our minimum, and maximum will be at zero here. Now let's make sure that we're doing this right here, because now I'm seeing some crazy stuff going there. Okay. So, we'll work around on this. First of all, i got to find that bone. Okay, there we go. Now, instead of it going from start at 1 and end at 3, I can do this in two ways. Do 0, negative 140, like that, and then it inverts it that way. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's not 140, it was 120. Negative 120, there we go. Um, now we got that, and now look at that. Folds all the way up. We can do it that way, or we can do it from negative 120, 0, and do it from 3 to 1. Two ways to do it. So, your choice. So, got that. See that? Okay. Anyway. So, um, you got that. All right. This one, I'm going to try something out here, folks. We're going to see what, the, what this does if we can use that same bone action. This is all purely experimental. So, I want you to experience the joy or the anguish with me as I do this. So, um, X rotation. Okay, and then three to one, negative 120. Let's see what that does now. 
All right. And then we need to get our target like this. Okay. Now we're going to try this and fingers crossed, folks. All right. So that one I was I was expecting, not expecting, you know what I'm saying on that. So that's okay. That is totally fine. So there are multiple ways to do this. We can create another action for this one. And we can just do it that way. Or we can also copy the rotation on this bad boy. A couple ways. So give it a go. And we're going to see what happens in this. So I want to try copy rotation. And I want to copy the rotation of this bad boy right here. So this one is bone.005. And I'm going to do local to local armature bone.005. Now let's take a look at this and see if it does this. Perfect. So there you go. So this is how you can go ahead and rig up a convertible ragtop. Later you can do soft bodies to get everything set up here. But I just wanted to show you the rod system. This is very basic, folks. Just know that. If you were to look up a convertible folding top on any car, you know what? It would be a lot more complex than this. This is, a, this is a startup for you. So anyway, so this is what we have for a beginner's look at doing a convertible rag top. So I really appreciate you checking this out. I hope that you really enjoyed this video, and I hope that you leave comments below. I hope you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. So thank you for watching this episode of Nathan's 3D Factory. Have a wonderful day.